Hello, dear leaders. Happy to be talking to you once again through our channel, Biblical Leadership Institute. Thank you for your continued support and uh, generosity. I sincerely urge you to subscribe, share with your friends and family, and also read uh, my latest book on uh, Christian leadership. Uh, I will add a link in the description. Incidentally, today, the 13th of August, is the second memorial day of my dear dad, who went to be with the Lord in 2019. I miss him and uh, thought to share with you how the Lord taught me to deal with uh, the death of a loved one. I found it fitting to talk about this specifically during a pandemic situation like what we are currently in. Uh, so we as people of faith know and understand how to deal with eventualities like these. Especially for leaders who are constantly looked up to, it is very important to accept and move forward, lest we bring down those who follow us. Also, our Christian faith teaches us that uh, death is a promotion to glory and uh, there is redemption and salvation in death. So it becomes imperative how we deal with the loss of a dear one. So in all of this, we finally bring glory to God. Without further ado, let's see what we have to learn today. Here are three lessons to keep in mind and learn so you can use them during difficult times. Uh, you, you even you know, could be someone currently struggling to cope up with the loss. Either way, I pray that God would speak through me and provide you with the consolation and the peace that passes all understanding. So number one, always be prepared to miss or be missed. As hurtful as it sounds, uh, death is an eventuality that uh, no one can escape. 2 Samuel 14.14 14, For we will surely die and are like water spilled on the ground which cannot be gathered up again. There is no escaping death and hence we should always be prepared to deal with, uh, with it. So then should we be scared or deny it as though it doesn't exist? Uh, absolutely not. We need to make up our minds to face an eventuality like that uh, with the hope that God is in complete control and the separation is just temporary. Ecclesiastes 8.8 8 says, No man has authority to restrain the wind with the wind or authority over the day of death. Though we know God means good for us and has great plans in our lives, uh, we should be very clear that the path of faith is not a rosy one. There are hiccups on the way and uh, occasionally we endure painful losses that we do not know the answers for. While it's uh, devastating and sudden, uh, as people of faith, we should be willing to portray our faith in God to face it head on. Psalms 112, 6-8 says, Surely, the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. I would urge you to pray to God to make your heart steadfast and uh, live a life without the fear of losing someone. Secondly, do not dramatize death. Well, this might be more relevant to Asian countries or more specifically to India. There is a general fear towards death and the people want to avoid it at any cost. This sort of anxiety that uh, prevails in the society results in people reacting in some strange ways. Uh, the state I am from, there are certain traditions like hiring wailers to loudly wail around the house where the death has happened. These lamenters do not have any sympathy whatsoever towards the suffering family, but just cry their lungs out only to be paid for it. Nobody in the household would take a shower, change their clothes to look nice and presentable, because that is considered an insult to the dead person. 
uh, you're supposed to look messy and that uh, messiness signifies that you're truly grieving. Still worse, you're judged based on how loud you cry and usually those who do not weep are stared upon as uh, heartless or emotionless. You're not allowed to smile at any cost and doing so would earn the wrath of everybody around. Uh, as you can see, death is uh, dramatized so much that for centuries together people adhere to traditions like these even though they appear very superficial. But we, as people of faith, should reflect the word of God under these circumstances. The others act like so because death is eternal separation according to them and they don't have any hope to hang on to. But look at our faith. Our confidence is in the Lord and uh, death is the pathway to be with him. 2 Corinthians 7.10 For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces repentance without regret, leading to salvation. But the sorrow of the world produces death. Reverend Gandhi Selvin, one of my most respected and uh, beloved servants of God, uh, when he was in his last days and knew his time was coming, instructed his children and grandchildren to not cry or wail at his funeral. Instead, treat it like a worship service. I couldn't attend the funeral personally, but heard from his daughter that uh, they stood around his casket and sang songs of redemption instead of the traditional funeral lamentation. Uh, what a testimony. A life's testimony fulfilled in one act of hope, isn't it? 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 14. But we do not want you to be uninformed brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. When the prophet Nathan boldly accused David of adultery, uh, he fasted and prayed for forgiveness, yet the Lord chose to strike the child that was born by Uriah's wife Bathsheba. When David heard his, of his son's death, see how he reacted. 2 Samuel 12, 19 to 23. David noticed that his attendants were whispering among themselves and he realized the child was dead. Is the child dead? He asked. Yes, they replied, he is dead. Then David got up from the ground. After he had washed, put on lotions and changed his clothes, he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house and at his request, they served him food and he ate. His attendants asked him, why are you acting this way? While the child was alive, you fasted and wept. But now that the child is dead, you get up and eat? He answered, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, who knows, the Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. But now that he's dead, why should I go on fasting? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. I feel this is the mark of true repentance. He said, I will go to him, but he will not return to me, and went on to live his life as usual. We Christians should learn a very important lesson that uh, though our tears and grievings are a result are a result of how truly we miss that person. It should never be based on the societal pressure to behave or act in a certain way. In the funeral service of uh, Ruth Graham, the wife of uh, Reverend Billy Graham, he went up to the stage to deliver his eulogy. He started off with a joke and the audience burst out laughing. Uh, I was very surprised that he had the absolute hope that his separation from his wife of 65 years is just temporal and he would soon meet her. 65 years of togetherness, a small break and going to be united once again. Why bother to make unnecessary noise and drama? Uh, I call this faith in an action. So the call here is to not dramatize death like the society around you does. Instead, stand out and deal with it from the perspective of the scripture, 
filled with hope and courage. Thirdly and lastly, how you deal with death is proof of your faith. Uh, a few years ago, uh, a man of God collapsed suddenly and was rushed to the hospital. They somehow revived him and uh, I happened to hear his testimony after he returned home. Uh, he was visibly shaken and uh, constantly mentioned uh, how he was terrified that uh, he was going to die on his way to the hospital. Uh, for a minute, I was quite shocked because what is the point of uh, preaching about faith and hope in God when death makes you terrified? Isn't it the whole point of Christian life? Philippians 121, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Uh, I was here in Canada when I heard the news that my dad was critical in the ICU and his chances of survival were slim. I immediately got into a flight and uh, I knew I would land to hear one of these three options. Uh, that my dad passed away already or he is alive but probably breathing his last or he got better. Uh, one of these three possibilities, right? All along the way, I prayed and asked God to give me the courage to face all three options because I know all of them are good news according to the word of God. Uh, it was an 18 hour, hour flight and uh, I think God molded me and prepared me to accept and be grateful when I heard my dad was no more upon landing. Lamentations 3.22, though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love. Sometimes it is easy for us to say we are Christians by following the traditions of Christianity as a religion. Believe me, it's fairly easy to play the game religion and even excel in it. But the real test of strength is uh, shown by how well we put our faith in use in our regular lives. What is the whole point of getting into depression through grieving when a loved one passes away while almost all our lives, from Sunday school to church, sermons, we have been taught to have eternal hope. So always remember how you deal with the death of a loved one is one of the biggest marks of your faith. If you falter in this, you might want to revisit your standing in your faith in God. So in summary, the noblest dedication to your lost one is not wailing loudly, being sentimental or dramatic. Instead, honoring their lives by living the legacy they left behind. Are there any unfulfilled dreams of your lost one uh, that you know of. Pursue those in honor of them. Are there life lessons and values that they upheld during their lives? Live those values in honor of them. This is the fittest dedication you can give to your lost one. On top of it, remember every passing day without your loved one is one day closer to meeting them again in the heavenly abode. If this does not cheer you, I don't know what else will. So though this is somewhat hard to digest and uh, difficult to anticipate, always base your grief on the word of God. And the God of peace will help you pass through difficult times with hope and courage. Revelation 21.4 He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. This is the hope of eternity with our Heavenly Father. Until I meet you next week with another thought, this is John signing off. God bless you.